Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here on the A417 for my mega How Do You Build a Road project following this road all the way through from the start to the finish. Natasha, you're the senior ecologist here. Why am I talking to you with a bridge behind us and what's been going on before that it was even here and this was separate land? Yeah, so before any of this started, uh, we, we stood in what was a field and some of this area is where we conducted some of our reptile translocation and we've also had to put in mitigation for other protected species and things such as bats, badgers, roman snails, you, you name it. So translocation, that's a big word. Does it, what does it actually mean you're physically done here? Because you've had a team here working with you at the start yep. before any of the diggers got here. That's it, yeah. Back in uh, early 2023, we, um, we started with a team of ecologists and it literally means picking them up, putting them in buckets and taking them to other, other areas away from the construction site. Um, so we needed to do that in order to, to enable all of these works to start. Um, we moved over 2,000 reptiles. 2,000? Yeah. So who would have thought they were just literally uh, around here? But the big news is, and I was quite shocked me, Natasha, was adders everywhere. Yeah. You know, hundreds of them, wasn't there? Oh, well, not quite, but we had, um, we had about 80 adders. So, yeah, yeah we... Um, and it, it actually enabled us to do some really quite vital uh, research work as well on, oh. on the adders. So... Adders are a hugely declining species in the whole of the UK and we had a really unique opportunity with this job to, uh, to look at how they respond to being moved to different receptor sites. Something that just isn't, isn't researched enough. It tends to be that um, during translocations and things, uh, animals are moved, but the follow-up isn't always there. So with this project, we really had a really big push on that. We fitted uh, radio tags to 10 of the adders and um, yeah, we, we sort of tracked their movements, g g gathered a load of data to see how the animals actually responded to being moved. And also it goes on to inform uh, not just be best practice of how translocation should be conducted, but also things like habitat management. What, what were they favouring on the new sites? Um, what can we learn from their behaviour to in order to inform those translocations going forward for other projects? And that's really, really exciting to, to yeah. share that, not just with your colleagues here, National Highways and the wider community, yeah. um, doing that research at the same time as, as protecting the species, but yeah. also, you know, using modern day technology. When I talk about GPS, when I talk about locating, it's where's the digger and what's it <laughs> yeah. doing and how much muck has it moved? We're now talking about where's the adders and where are they, are they moving to? Yeah. But also, when you look at that habitat, you did something really cool where you, you made, uh, you, you got a roller out and you made them a, a sort of sunbathing area, didn't you? Um, yeah, so <laughs> on one of the receptor sites, there's been some habitat management where they um, roll the bracken and things so that the adders like to, to go out and bask on there. And it also obviously doubles up as, as habitat management for the areas. Um, but yeah, all of this information, you know, you wouldn't think that you'd be collecting it from a construction project and from a construction company, but um, th this project is a landscape-led scheme and we've got some really key stakeholders and customers and things who are uh, really invested in, in uh, the nature and the wildlife that is on the scheme. So it's really important that we not just do our bit but go above and beyond really where we can. And this comes on to the bridge that we've got behind us. Also folks, you've been doing some works with bats, badgers and other things like that. Yeah. But the bridge is not going to just be for cars or anything like this. It this, won't be. This is a multifunctional bridge, Natasha. What does that mean? Because there's going to be green stuff on it, isn't there? There is, yeah. So there won't be any vehicles on it at all. Oh, nothing at all? No, no vehicles at all. This bridge will just be for uh, humans. There'll be a, a footpath going uh, along the side of it, which will be about two metres wide. Uh, but then there's about 30, 35 metres that's all vegetation. And so it will be connecting up the two habitats where the road has gone through. Um, connectivity is really important, making sure that the wildlife doesn't have to cross the road. The wildlife can have that connectivity and carry on doing what they've always done in this area. So it will be planted with grassland, there'll be hedgerow, and it will be vital for the connectivity for, for the wildlife. There'll hopefully be bats commuting along it, badgers and all sorts of things using it and uh, getting to the other side of the road, basically. Fantastic, you know, and it's like, <laughs> 
obviously there's, there's roads around here as well but when you can really give uh, uh, animals a safe crossing as, it, as they say that that does play a, a massive part but also it opens up the Cotswold Way as well which is a That's really it. great um, junction but that from from this particular project it keeps it safer for walkers and allows them to enjoy the environment around as well yeah. it's all part of mixing that in but who'd have thought you're building a big bridge which is about 30 plus meters wide and and so that is it going to be a community space for people and wildlife <laughs> yeah mainly wildlife that that's the bit that i like about it is actually the main bulk of it is dedicated for the wildlife uh people get to benefit from it too but it's yeah it's really putting that landscape led and and um, wildlife focus ahead of everything else and folks there's, there's other things that have been done that we've been people have been up in trees putting special bat boxes up and things yeah. like that haven't they and we've been looking after other parts of the animal community as well yeah. but the big news here folks for me is natasha and the team are gold haven't you you've won gold <laughs> Nat natasha yeah. at a recent awards yeah, reflecting did. all of the work that you've done here yeah. what did that mean to you as a team yeah, well, it, it was really good and we've won a few awards that have been focused on the ecology uh, that we've done, but uh, the gold was particularly special because it was for the added telemetry because it is such an innovative um, thing to do, especially part of a construction project. But as I said, it, it, it's something that hopefully can go on to inform best practice. And as an ecologist, you know, when I took a job with Kia, I didn't expect to be, you know, working on research projects and things like that as well. So it's, yeah, it's brilliant, really. Fantastic. And Natasha's here for the full stretch until it's all opened up and everybody yeah. can enjoy this new road. But it's also putting a lot back into the community around here. We're doing all sorts of different things, which I've been talking about with your colleague, Mark Sabato, recently. And you can find all of that on our ch channels. Make sure you subscribe to that to find the latest videos. But Natasha, it's time for us to let the bridge be built and therefore follow the ecology of this project and I'll be talking to Natasha again when we're down to talk about some trees folks. Fantastic to meet you. Congratulations you. on the gold. Thank you.